the Detroit Pistons have seen the improved play of Killing Hayes, the improved play of Kevin Knox, the return of Alec Burks. But there's another player who deserves to have just as much praise from his play over the last few games. We'll talk about him in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Pistons podcast. Per usual, I'm your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. And if you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So obviously, We've seen the Pistons over the last six, seven, eight games play much improved basketball, hang in there against teams that are just way better than them, win a few games that none of us thought they would be able to win, and continue to just, again, like I said, play competitive basketball for 48 minutes, and that is due to the improved play of a lot of players. Obviously, we've talked a lot in this podcast about the improved play of Killian Hayes. We've seen the return of Alec Burks mean big things for this team. We'll talk about that a little bit later, too. We've seen... Kevin Knox come out of nowhere and contribute some minutes. We saw even Diallo have a good few game stretch. We've seen a lot of players come up, Jalen Duran, a lot of guys come up and step up in the absence of some of their top guys and play really well. But one of the players who I feel like we need to special or dedicate an entire segment to real quick is Marvin Bagley. Now you guys will remember when Marvin Bagley first came back from his injury, he, I, I had some, I had some for, uh, criticisms of him. I, I, I was being critical of him. It had a lot to do with one, his defense, and two, the fact he wasn't being active on the boards. This team, we've went through the defensive numbers many, many times about how many defensive rebounds they were allowing at the time. They were like bottom three in the league in defensive rebounding. They were towards the like I believe bottom five in second chance points at the time. That was a major reason why their defense had been so horrific. They couldn't get a rebound. They couldn't get off the court. And guys were getting easy put-back layups, put-back dunks, kick-out threes. Like, it was it was a major reason why they were struggling. And especially when Isaiah Stewart went down and Marvin Bagley had now been elevated to starting five, he needed to do more as a rebounder. He needed to get active on the glass much more. And he wasn't doing that in the first few games. So just, let's just go look at it real quick. So in the games that he missed, or Isaiah Stewart have missed, we're looking at... Marvin Bagley having three rebounds against the Lakers, six rebounds against the Kings, three rebounds against the Denver Nuggets, six rebounds against the Utah Jazz. The six rebounds against the Jazz is were I actually were impressed with those ones. He only played 20 minutes in that game, and he played pretty physical within that game. So I wasn't too bad, too mad about that one. But still, he wasn't getting rebounds in these games. However, over the last two games, he's played really well. And in a game against Phoenix, he had 12 rebounds. And a game against Cleveland. He had 10 rebounds. And that game against Cleveland, he was going against Marvin Bagley. And the game against Phoenix, he was battling with DeAndre Aiden. And he showed up for the occasion. He got physical. He's been active on the glass. He's been much more active around the rim. I don't know if that's something we're going to continue to see. But I think clearly the coaching staff got to him and said, listen, if you're going to start this five position, we need you to be more active on this glass. We, we need you to give us more over there. And over the last two games, he's absolutely done that against two premier big men. It's not like he's going to get some trash cans. He's going to get some two pretty damn good big men, and he was out there battling. He's getting 11 rebounds a game. So it's a very small sample size, just the two games. But it's a, it, I want to point out trends in, in this season. It's going to be a long season, and we're going to wait around and wait for 20-game sample sizes to talk about anything good. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough on all of us. So let's talk about some good trends that we're seeing, and that's one of the good trends. That's first, his rebounding. However, there's something else that I've seen as of late with Marvin Bagley that almost is more, actually not almost, is more impressive to me than what the rebounding is. And this goes back over the last three games. Now, everyone knows that defense has been a major issue for Marvin Bagley throughout his whole career. He's been a very, very bad defender throughout his entire career. And to start this season coming back, it looked more of the same. It was looking more of the same. And again, 
not just myself, but a lot of people were critical of his defense because it looked like more of the same. He had to improve it on that end. However, you've seen Marvin Bagley play better on defense, and you've also seen the Detroit Pistons change their defensive scheme from then with him. So when he first came back, I feel like you saw him playing a lot in switch defense. I feel like he was playing switch across the uh, the Pistons were playing more so uh, switch across the board. They still were dabbling in some other stuff. They, they were playing some different defensive schemes. But I feel like in the first few games Marvin Bagley came back, he was – a lot of the times I was seeing him in switch. And he was getting destroyed with that. And it was leading to the Pistons not being able to get rebounds because he'd be on the perimeter and then he wouldn't come back and crash the glass. It, it, you just dealt with those issues. However, over the last three games, I've seen him primarily in drop coverage. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what drop coverage is, drop coverage is, and all these coverages, this is all like drop, switching, this is all about how you defend people in pick and roll and stuff. So let's say the other team does a pick and roll. You're basically asking your guard to go over that screen, and the, the big man is retreating. The, the big man on, on defense is retreating. He is giving a little space for the pull-up jumper for the guard, and he's retreating trying to take away the ball handler and the big man who's rolling to the rim for enough time for the guard to get back in front of the guard. So he's not switching over. He's dropping back. He's dropping back, and he's waiting and waiting, trying to give the guard enough time to get back in front of the guard before he just completely retreats back to the center. So, and, and there's there's some other stuff, obviously. It's not as simple as that, but it's easy to identify when you see it like that. That's the best way I can describe it. So they've had him in drop coverage the last three games, I feel like, a lot more. And he's playing some of the best defense I've seen him play in a Pistons uniform. He had two steals against the Jazz. He had one steal against the Suns. He had three steals against the Cavs. He had a block against Cleveland, had a block against Phoenix. He had two blocks against Denver. So if you go over the last four games with Marvin Bagley, he's averaging 2.5 stocks a game. So that's combining steals and blocks. I think that's pretty impressive stuff. And on my Twitter tomorrow, I'm going to be tweeting out a breakdown that I have of some two plays, two plays that exhibit just how well I feel like he's, or I don't want to make it sound like he's been great defensively. He hasn't been like all world, but he's been much better from what he's been. And there's two plays I want to point out that I'm going to break down tomorrow on my Twitter. Be Stay tuned for that. Follow me over there if you want to see it. That point out just how much better he's been playing. I'll try to describe these plays for you guys now. Uh, for those of you guys that don't have a Twitter, they're both these plays against Cleveland. There's one play against Cleveland where he's just super active. Actually, there's three plays. The first play is him being active in drop coverage with his hands, and he's trying to take away the, the roller. He's trying to tra- take away the ball handler. He's moving his hands all over the place, and the ball handler goes to give a bounce pass to the rolling big man, but because he has his hands active and moving around, he knocks the ball away. That's an incredible rep. If your big man's able to have active hands in – in drop coverage and take away that bounce pass and kind of mess with the ball handler. That kind of stuff is an incredible skill to have. And that was an incredible rep by him. And he had one of those recently. So that's one rep that really stuck out to me that I want to break down. The second one is another play where the defender, the, the ball handler's defender gets stuck on the screen. He gets basically wiped out of this play. The Cavs run Spain pick and roll against the Pistons. And Marvin Bagley's basically left to play one on two against Garland and Mobley. So he basically commits all the way to Garland on his drive, puts his hands up, plays with him, forces him to try to do a dump off pass. Garland goes up for the runner, realizes it's not open. So then he goes to dump it off to Evan Mobley, who's rolling to the rim. But again, Marvin Bagley having his active hands to contest and then actively trying to take away passing lanes. He knocks, not only does he take away the running attempt, he also takes away the pass and gets a steal. Incredible rep by him as well. And then there's another game later on in that game against the Cleveland Cavaliers where Seti Osman is setting a, a off-ball screen for Evan Mobley on the opposite block for him to come around the screen, come to the strong side block, and get a post-up. Marvin Bagley, instead of just getting screened and letting him get this post-up, he fights over the screen, stays physical with Evan Mobley all the way there, and then when they try to do the entry pass, he straight up just out out just out physicals, I guess. That, that's the best way I, could, I can do describe it here. Evan Mobley just just gets real physical with them, takes the ball away, picks it off, and gets a seal. So those are three plays that Marvin Bagley has done defensively as of late 
that really stuck out to me. And there's some other ones too. He's having more and more good reps in drop coverage. And I think the Pistons may have found his bet his best defensive scheme to play him in. Because it, it's been a mixed bag throughout his whole career. You don't know what to play him in. You don't know what exactly to play him in. And as long as he's playing at the five, and honestly, any pick and roll with him, I think he's starting to show that drop coverage is where he's probably going to be most comfortable in. And we've actually seen some really damn good reps out of him there. So combine that with the fact his defense, his rebounding, and then obviously over the just the last five games, we already know, or six games, we know Marvin Bagley can score. Over the last six games, he's averaging 15 points a game on 62% shooting. He's even hit a few threes. So offensively, it was not a problem. We knew he can score the ball very efficiently around the basket. He's very good at that, but it's the other stuff that he has to do to be, actually become a good NBA player. And he's doing that as of late. And it's incredibly impressive for me to see. Incredibly impressive, especially the defense. The defense is really jumping off to me. So I want to see how long this keeps going. Does he continue to give us good reps on defense? And does he continue to be physical around the glass? But as of right now, over the last few games, he deserves a ton of credit because he's playing really well. Uh, and I'm happy to see it. Playing playing really nice basketball. So good for Marvin Bagley. Wanted to give him a segment and talk about how well he was playing because um, he deserves it. So let me know what you guys think about Marvin Bagley's play as of late in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, this team is playing differently with with these players out, with Kay Cunningham out, with Jay and Ivy out, with Stu out. Heck, even while Bay was out. This team is playing different. And, you know, the numbers back it up. They're playing better since these guys have been. What's going on? And is this something we can expect? To, do, do, should we expect this team to get worse when they get back? Or is this something that will even get better when some of their best guys get back? We'll talk about that when we come back. But first... I got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, holiday, or even prom. Find an affordable economy cars if you're on a budget or just need to get to point A to point B. Test drive that new electric vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits into your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms and conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget the boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Again, you can find any car that suits you. Uh, affordable economy cars. You want a cool, classy, luxury car for a special event of any kind. You want to try out a new electric vehicle. You can do any, just check out any car at Turo.com. It has it for you. Again, forget the boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. So I want to thank you guys again for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Lockdown Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So Kay Cunningham has been out since November 9th. Isaiah Stewart has been out since, I believe, November 14th or 15th. November 14th or 15th. Sadiq Bey missed a few games. Jane Ivey has missed a few games as of late. And those are your, what, what people would say before the season, three of your top probably, I think most people would probably say three top five guys, three of your top five, top six maybe. Um, definitely up there. You're, they're some of your best players, especially KK's your franchise guy, obviously. And they've been without those guys. However, it doesn't look like the team has missed a beat. The team has played really well. They've won a few games they shouldn't have won. A Western road trip where it looked like without those guys, it was going to all go to hell. It actually was probably the most fun part of the season so far, how they played during that Western road trip without those guys. They played really hard. They played really good basketball, at least offensively. Defensively has been a little up and down. But they played really good offense for the majority of this stretch. And they capped it off with a really good defensive game against the Cleveland Cavaliers. And again, this is without some of their top guys. So what's going on? Do the numbers back this up? Is this just an eye test kind of thing? Well, I wanted to bring up the numbers. I wanted to look at it and see if it backs it up what we're seeing with our eyes. And let's go ahead and just look at it. So 
all the way until November 9th. So in all the games that Kay Cunningham played, their offensive rating as a team was 107.3. Their defensive rating was 117.3. That's a minus 10 net rating. Now, if you go to where Stu missed November 15th, in the games played they uh, during the time with Stu, they had an offensive rating of 111.6 and a defensive rating of minus 5.7. Now, if you do their offensive and defensive rating, since Isaiah Stewart got hurt, so since Stu got hurt, and the reason why I'm doing since Stu got hurt is because that's where you're now you're missing Cade, Stu, and Sadiq. So now it, it's all you're without all three of those guys when Stu got hurt. So without all of those guys, you're looking at an offensive and defensive rating, offensive rating of 112.2 and a defensive rating of 115.4. That's the best numbers they have compared to those either of those two stretches and a, the best net rating at minus 3.2. Now, again, each one of these are small sample sizes. Each, each one of these. It's been a short season and these guys have been hurt. So each one of these have been small sample sizes. However, I really, really don't think that we can look past how the Pistons have played since November 14th, 15th. Because I feel like that would be doing them a disservice for how well they've played played over the past two weeks, two and a half weeks. They played some really nice basketball. I don't want to take that away from them at all. Don't want to do that. So the question is that I've already seen a lot of Pistons fans having. I've seen you guys arguing about it in the comment section down below. I've seen you guys arguing about it in my mentions. I've seen Pistons community on Twitter arguing about it. Is this team better without these guys? And what is it? What's what's contributing to this team flipping the switch and actually playing really good basketball? Is it because they're missing those guys and those guys just weren't playing winning basketball and the pl- ones who are playing now are? It, w- what What is it? What, what What's causing this? And I have an answer for you. Or maybe not an answer. I guess I should say my opinion. I have my opinion for what it is. One, the very first reason. I think this team is playing better, is Alec Burks. Alec Burks' return has been major for the Pistons. He returned on November 11th, then missed the next game on November 12th, and he's played every game since November 14th. He is averaging 16.7 points. He's shooting 45% from the field and 43% from deep. That's pretty damn good for a guy that's coming off your bench, playing 21 minutes a game. He's damn near scoring like over half a point a minute. Like he's coming in and instantly scoring very efficiently. He's drawing 6.2 free throws a game, shooting 82%. Getting to get into the line, scoring from everywhere, pull-ups, catch and shoot, after rim, drawing fouls, pull-up middies. He's been tremendous for the Pistons. So it just so happened that at the same time they lost these guys, they got a veteran key contributor to the team who is playing absolutely lights out basketball. So I think that's one of the absolute main reasons why they're playing better is simply because Alec Burks returned from his injury. If he was healthy through all, throughout the whole year, I think maybe we're looking at this team a little bit differently. I don't think they're winning like four more games or anything, but I definitely think they're much more competitive. I think you see them in more games. Their offense would look a lot better. The bench would have looked a lot better. The bench was horrific before all these guys got hurt, before Cade got hurt. The bench was terrible. And that leads me into point number two. The second reason why I think this team is just playing better as of late, dudes have just dudes have turned the corner. D- dudes didn't start off the year very well, but turned the corner, pulled themselves out of it. Obviously, the biggest one is Killian Hayes. Killian Hayes is playing the best basketball of his career. He looks like a completely different player. We're heck, we're seeing him talk trash to players on the court. Like we're seeing a completely different personality. We're seeing a completely different type of attitude, play style. He's playing completely different, playing the best basketball of his career. And this just so happened to start happening once dudes started going down. The first 10 games were horrific for him. But over the last 12, 13 games, he's playing really well. He's playing really good basketball. And and like I said, that just so happened to come at the same time as Cade getting hurt, Stu getting hurt, Sadiq getting hurt. So do I think he's playing this way because these guys are hurt? Partly, I think he's definitely enjoying the freedom 
and the, the freedom of not having to look over his back because of Cade's injury, I feel like that definitely has opened him up and freed him up to play free, uh, to play his game much more confidently. I definitely think that has a lot to do with it. But also, he was even starting to play a little bit better before Cade. Before Cade got hurt, he was even starting to show small sam- uh, small signs that he was starting to turn it around. So I, I don't want to attribute it all to Cade's injury, but definitely him having the ability to start games and play 30-plus minutes a night, now that, that has a big thing to do with it. But he's just playing better basketball, and he wasn't. He was playing terrible basketball when they were healthy. So that's two. Three, you got the return of Marvin Bagley, who's starting to play a lot better. Kevin Knox has come in and played three of the best, some of the best games of his career in the, those three, four games on the Western Road Trip. So I feel like a lot of it just has to do with players who weren't playing well while they were on the court are turning, their, turning the corner this season. They've developed, they've gotten better, and they've pulled themselves out of bad streaks. So I feel like that has a lot to do with it. Simply things that were out of their control and things they didn't have while they were on the court. That's that's one of those are the two big reasons. Alec Burks and everyone else. Alec Burks, Killian Hayes, Knox, and his few minutes that he's been playing. It's just, and Marvin Bagley. That just has a lot to do with it. And then obviously, thirdly, I do think there is something that needs to change when those dudes come back. Now I don't think Cage coming back this year. But that's if he gets if he gets surgery, he's not coming back this year. If he rests, then yeah, we'll see him again. I don't think he'll just rest. It, it, the, he, the smart thing to do is surgery. The smart thing is to do is surgery, and we talked about that on the other on another podcast a few days ago uh, from what some doctors said. But either way, my point is this segment is running a little bit long. But my point of what I'm trying to say here is there is something to the way this team is playing without those guys, and the way they played with those guys. The ball. I feel like the offense has smoothed much more. It has been much more smooth without these guys. They've passed the ball more. They've played for each other more. You've seen them get better shots. Again, the ball's moved side to side a lot more. And again, I, I don't know what any other way to say. I'm trying to figure out another way of describing this, but really the best way to say it is that they're playing for each other. They're sharing the basketball. And that was not something they were doing with those guys, it was a lot of your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn. And it and you can't have that. You can't have that. It, it, it's a kind of a clunky offense. And you're starting to see them share it more. So those two first two reasons, biggest reasons. But third reason is definitely something that you should keep your eye on when Ivy, Sadiq, and Stu get back, and Boyan eventually comes back from his injury, is all those guys want the ball in their hands. Three of those guys, not Stu. All three of those guys want the ball in their hands to score. None of them are really great playmakers. Ivy is an okay one. The other two are not good playmakers. They're not looking to pass, create for other people. They're just looking to score. And the Pistons were playing all three of them on the court at once in the starting lineup. So I just think that you should. hopefully they're watching the way the team's playing now and they start to play a little differently when they come back. They buy into this sharing the ball across the board. That's just something that I'm, I'm going to be watching for. However, again, like I said, that's way down my list. That's way down my list of reasons why. I don't think that that's, oh, all of a sudden the team starts sharing the ball. That's why they're great now. No, it's the first two reasons for sure. But that third reason is something you should monitor when they get back. Does this team go back to playing more ISO-heavy basketball? Does this team go back to not sharing the basketball as much? Do we start to see that? Just monitor that. But let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section down below. Why are the Pistons playing better basketball as of late? Do you guys think they're actually somehow better without them? Just let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. When we come back, we got some injury updates for you that we want to talk about, that I want to talk about with you guys. But first, I got to tell you guys about one of our sponsors, LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster, and for free. It's so easy. You simply add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to hire or interview and then hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs, help you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster and easier. 
you want to try to finish out the year strong. And how? what's the better way than finding the right team member to join your squad and finish out, help again, help you finish out the year strong? Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply again. Go to LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. So obviously, the Pistons are dealing with a lot of injuries. A lot of injuries. But I guess we do have some some good news. Some good news. Um, Boyan Bogdanovich. Injury was not as severe as it looked, and it was not as severe as some Pistons trainers thought, apparently. Mike Curtis of the Detroit News reported, and obviously talked with Dwayne Casey, um, that, again, Boyan Bagdanovich injury is not more severe, and it is a right knee. They're describing it right now as just right knee and ankle soreness. Dwayne Casey, when he was asked about it, says it was a torque action where he stepped on his ankle and it went to his knee, but it's not as bad as it seemed. It's still sore and still hurting. Bogey's a tough kid, a tough guy. He'll fight through it, and he'll come back from it. Now, this is kind of just going down the same. <laughs> we're kind of just going down the same road with with all the other injuries. Is that I don't feel like that's very. I mean, I, I feel like we could probably get a little bit more than that. Like, how long are we expecting him to be out? Um, did they run any? Like, it, I feel like we could just be told more. We could just be like he'll fight through it and come back from it. Okay, when? What's the timetable we're looking at? Like, are we talking like a few games? Are we, is it going to be out a few weeks? Like, what's going on here? That's just another another example of I, I wish that this team was a little bit more transparent and open about what's going on with with their players' injuries um, and and timetables and stuff. They just never have been, and it, it's just an annoyance for me. Um, they also spoke about Kay Cunningham. Dwayne Casey said that they have no update on Kay Cunningham. He says, I have no clue. It's up to the medical group and to Cade. Whatever is best for his health, I'm all for it. One way or the other, whatever he decides to do, I'm 100% behind him, his family, and his people. Now, why I think, for those of you guys who have not read the athletic article by James Edwards III, where he interviews a doctor talking about Cade's injury and which way he should go, rest or surgery, I advise you guys to go check that out immediately. But we talked about it a little bit on the last podcast, or two podcasts ago, I think it was, that Cade, with or within that article, they said Cade, or the doctor said, that most young players would get surgery. That surgery would most likely be the right option. And that resting it, it, will, it could pop back up again. So I don't see why surgery wouldn't be the answer here. I think I feel like it would be really dumb if surgery was not the route they took. But I, I, I find it find it interesting maybe maybe not interesting but just you know a little nugget that Dwayne Casey said he's 100% behind him his family and his people so I feel like and it kind of was said in that article too from James but this isn't like I I don't think that this is now at at this point at least a medical team's uh medical team's decision don't think it's a Pistons training decision training staff decision coaching decision front office decision I think that right now it's in case it's it's Cade's decision. We got the report that the Pistons were kind of pushing him to to get surgery, and, and people were saying that they believe it was because they were trying to go for Victor. Now that they they're thinking about Victor Wembanyama in the offseason in the draft, they're like, you know what, just go ahead and get that surgery, and we will end up with Victor, and you can come back next year strong with another superstar prospect next to you. That was reported. So I feel like at this point, the front office has said everything they've said. The medical staff has said everything they've said. And now it's just in the hands of Cade and his people. Cade's talking with his peeps, trying to figure out what it is that he wants to do. What does he think that is the best scenario for himself? And I hope, I just hope that they steer him in the right direction. From everything I've read about this injury, from everything that was said in that athletic article from James with with the doctor talking about Cade's injury, I, it just, it, I feel like it just would be the wrong decision if he just rested this. They, they, the doctor said most young players that would deal with this injury would get surgery because you're going to, it, it's very, very small chance that you don't come back the same. 
Like, rarely does that happen. It, I don't think he even named us. Actually, in there, they asked him to name someone or name a scenario where it hasn't happened, and he couldn't name one. He didn't name one. So it's not like this has happened. It's it, it. He gets the surgery. He misses the season, but it's not an issue again. He doesn't have to deal with it. This is not back-to-back years where Kate is dealing with a lower body injury that slowed his start, made him miss games, and now potentially the season. Why have to worry about that possibly happening again in the future? Why, why are we worrying about that? Why play through an injury that's going to keep coming up throughout the season? In a season that you're not competing for anything. They're not competing for a championship. They're not competing for a playoff spot. It's not happening. So why you why put yourself through that? Why take a risk with that where you could just simply get the surgery and then when you come back next year, you don't have to worry about that injury popping back up again. It's, it, it's all good. Why do that? I just hope that that's – I believe that's the right – track to go. I'm sure Cade doesn't want to hear that right now. I'm sure he's really mad that he would have to miss the whole season. He wants to play. I get it. But this is another one of scenarios, just like with, you know, there's all kinds of examples of this, like when a guy gets hurt, but he still wants to play. Heck, go back years with Blake Griffin. Or if you want to go to the NFL, even look at the NFL, when a guy gets a concussion, he wants to keep playing, but he has to be saved from himself. Blake Griffin, in my opinion, should have been saved from himself. That's why he's basically no nothing now. Players need to be saved from themselves. I know they want to play. They're super competitive. But based off everything I read in that article, and everything I've watched from some medical doctors um, talking about this injury, I, I just it, it sounds like surgery it would be the best option. And I, I wouldn't mess around with it. I wouldn't mess around with it. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to play through this or just give it rest and have it pop back up potentially again at some point. So that's just where I'm at with it. Um, that's all the update we got, though, with Cade, is that basically what I b- took from that is that, hey, we've given him all the information we possibly could. Now it's we, we just wait for to see what he wants to do. We're just going to wait and see. It's in, his, it's in his court. So we'll see what he decides to do, man. We'll see what he decides to do. The front office wants him to get surgery. Because of Victor, is Victor a little bit to do with it? I'm sure that they're thinking about that. But also because it sounds like the smartest thing to do. It sound, that's what it sounds like. So front office wants him to. I'm sure the medical staff is probably advising him to do it. Um, we'll wait and see though. Um, and lastly, before we leave, um, the podcast, just want to give you guys the injury update for tonight's game against the Knicks. Marvin Bagley is questionable with a migraine. Boyan is questionable with his right knee and ankle soreness. Jane Ivy is still questionable with his right knee soreness. And Isaiah Stewart is still questionable with his right big toe sprain. So four guys that the Pistons may be without now, Marvin Bagley would be an addition to this. Um, but, yeah, that, that's what we're looking at right now with the injury report against the Knicks. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today, though. Let me know what you guys think about the, today's podcast in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you are listening to this on. Enjoy the game tonight. Hopefully they get a win. Hopefully they play really hard, play a competitive game, continue to see some improved play from this team. But until next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe, go Pistons, and peace out.